My name is Noel McLean, and I've recently written this book called A Less Green and Pleasant Land of Threatened Wildlife. And uh, I'm going to say a few things about, about it. I think there are a few answers to that. One of them is evident from where we are. I mean, this is Cambridge University Press conservation area, and it's a very pleasant place to be. So I think wildlife matters partly because it's life enhancing. People enjoy having birds or butterflies in their gardens, or they enjoy being in a place like this with wildflowers. But there's a more serious level that wildlife is a reflection of the health of the planet on which we live. And because our wildlife is not as good as it should be, it, it means that the, the health of the planet is not as good as it should be. So I think that's another reason for being interested in it and taking note of it. It's constantly changing, and of course, that's been true time out of mind. But in recent years, it's changed mainly for the worse, that is, there's many more declines than there are increases. And that's partly because of things like agricultural intensification and the increase in human population and pollution and whatever. Uh, but it's a mix of good stories and bad stories. Uh, and so things like the reintroduction of the red kite and the white-tailed eagle has gone well, and that's a plus, and whole cats are coming back into Wales and so on. So there are good things and good stories, but also there are a lot of sad stories. There are, a lot, there are many more declines than there are increases. And uh, even in an area like this, if we went rummaging around, we'd probably find it quite hard to find a hedgehog. And hedgehogs are now declining quite sharply, which is rather sad. Um, and there are many other, I mean, a lot of birds which migrate to and from Africa are having a hard time because life is not good in Africa anymore. And often they're shot on the way, of course, as they come over past Malta or southern Italy. Uh, so our wildlife is, is a mixed bag. In some areas it's doing well, and in others it's not. Well, things, the sort of things that I mentioned, that is, uh, Human population increase is a big one because we all want more space and more services and more resources. Uh, agriculture has changed in my lifetime out of all knowing, really. So a lot of the hedgerows have gone and winter stubble is a thing of the past. And so these sort of factors have impacted very much on wildlife. You take a bird like the grey partridge, which used to be in my youth abundant on every farm. And now they're quite rare because they're dependent on relatively unspoiled farmland. Uh, the weakness of the life story of the grey partridge is that the little partridges, when they first hatch, are fed on caterpillars. And there aren't any more caterpillars, really. It's very hard to find them in the average field or hedgerow. And so grey partridges have not done well. You know, I've been scratching my head about that question for a long time. <laughs> I think it has to be said that maybe the main thing we must do is pressurize our government to put concern for the environment high on the agenda. At the moment, it's rather low on the agenda. If you little listen to political speeches before the election, almost nobody mentioned the environment. It wasn't a big point to make, but it should be. You know, our, we should be much more concerned about the environment. So there are things we can do at home, but I think the main thing we have to do is try and do things nationally. The immediate future is mixed. Uh, I think some things are, have disappeared to such an extent they will never recover. So extinctions will become more frequent. Uh, and so we will have a diminished flora and fauna uh, but some things will do well. And in fact, we were just talking over lunch about the fact that some things like little egrets and common buzzers and so on have done well, partly because of global warming. So it's not all, the future is not all bad. It's a mixed bag of, but we can expect, I think, an increasing number of extinctions. 
I suppose it's because I have a concern about wildlife. I have since I was a kid. And, you know, professionally, I was a geneticist, so I wasn't much involved with wildlife. But when I became semi-retired, I suppose my old passion returned. And I now feel passionately that things have to be done to try and save the wildlife that we have. And I suppose I, I wrote the book primarily to draw people's attention to the fact that our wildlife is not doing very well and needs much more care and attention than it gets.